party right now and part of it is we have as a last time i talked to with you a just a few weeks ago here we talked about the west virginia democratic platform and the centrality of a 21st century economic bill of rights to all of that and which is for you know all of this but the audience um that is based on fdr's second bill of rights that he introduced in his uh state of the union speech in 1944 which was itself based on uh the four freedoms that he had enumerated before that which we have basically heard a lot about all through this convention um and when he introduced the four freedoms he said uh you know his second his economic bill of rights he said uh you're a necessitous man is not a free man you know quoting the old english judge that you're not you're not free if you're hungry you're not free if you're homeless you're not free if you don't have health care pardon the interruption but you know yeah it's 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 ties right into this whole freedom frame that has become the the the, the core the foundation of the harris campaign and it is it is i am I'm a little exhausted. I'm very excited after the last few days here. And the part of my excitement is that uh, we are talking about freedom. I wrote a, an essay back in last November that was just simply called, In West Virginia, Democrats are fighting for real freedoms. And it was up, we put it up in the Daily Coast, put it up in my Substack, tried to get it out to as many outlets as possible. And I'm. it is very... I, you know, I was never going to vote for anyone but a Democrat in this election cycle anyway, but hearing the National Democratic Party talking in these terms in no uncertain way and talking about how um, in no uncertain terms, when we have economic royalists, when we have oligarchs be able to buy our elections, for instance, when, we, when they're stealing our wages, again, you, we are, they, are, they are stealing our freedoms when push comes to shove. Uh, a very concrete example I will give is our current governor, Jim Justice, and a U.S. Senate candidate. He's a Republican. He was a Democrat. He was a Republican before that. He's a, he was a billionaire, uh, but I would call him both morally and financially bankrupt. Hmm. Um, he was just, there was a, um, just in the last couple of days, there was a report that came out that said that the employees of the Greenbrier Hotel are likely to lose their health care in the next week or two because... Uh, first of all, he has run that hotel into the ground, uh, uh, which is... His family owns it? Yes. And, um, uh, and the Greenbrier, for those who don't know, is also, it was, it's probably most famous as the hotel where if there was, in the event of a nuclear war throughout the Cold War, the entire U.S. government was going to be take, placed over there. Oh, really? It, it has is there like an underground shelter? bunker? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And, uh... And which, which had to help uh, him, him and his family out a little bit with some government money. Well, he wasn't the owner then. Um, oh, and and uh, so, but he has basically stolen the employees' wages for their health care uh -huh. and not put it towards their health care. Right. And still has managed to bankrupt that, uh, that hotel. It is likely to go up to auction within the next month. Um, is he just sticking the money in his pocket? Who knows? I mean, one would assume that's yeah. how one becomes a, a allegedly a billionaire. Yeah. And the same thing with our former president and current convicted ex-president Donald yeah. Trump, yeah. right? And it's, there's there's really nothing there except for a lot of debt and um, bluster. Yeah, yeah, stealing from the employees. So, uh, and, and what steals their freedoms? 